The producers would like to thank WFWM 91.9 and Frostburg State University for their generous cooperation in the production of this program. This program is made possible by the support of The Toad Hall Foundation. The Darklands is produced by Misfit Toys Industries in Frostburg, Maryland, and is solely responsible for the content of this program. The producers encourage all listeners to support their local public radio station, WFWM 91.9, with financial support. No rebroadcast or transmission of this program is allowed without the written permission of Misfit Toys Industries. This program is intended for mature audiences. Listener discretion is advised. The Dark Lands. Ice fair in a glacier. Tucked away in this remote corner of Russia, this ice is as undisturbed now as it has been for the last four and a half million years. Surrounded by mountains on three sides and with a narrow valley, you can only see sunlight shimmering off its silvery surfaces once a year. Cut it. It's not good. You said surfaces again. Go back to the top and get it right this time. I'm sorry. What is it, three times now? (laughs) Sincere apologies. I will get it right this time. Just pick it up from a narrow valley and lose the silvery shimmering crap. Just say once a year and move on. We're losing the light and it'll be another year before you get it right. Right. No shimmery surface. Oh, sure, I can say it now. In three, two... Surrounded by mountains on three sides and with a narrow valley, sunlight only reaches this glacier once a year. As this water rarely melts at all, this is believed to be some of the most well-preserved prehistoric water remaining on the planet. And if one man has his way, that water will soon be on your store shelves, but it'll come with quite a price tag. So don't be thinking about using it for the family lemonade. <laughs> Cut. That's good enough. We're going to splice in footage from the interview anyway. Ah, suits me. Even with the sun shining, this place is freezing. What do you say we find a bar, Ike? Suits me. Anything 80 proof or higher suits you, Ike. Only when the camera's put away. Then my time's my own. Here, here. And this shoot has been a disaster from day one. We were in a four-star hotel in Moscow on day one. All right, day two then. Since then, it's been nothing but freezing everywhere. We're in Russia, dingbat. Yeah, and what for? So we can basically make an infomercial for Bryce Dickery. Documentary, Declan. We're making a documentary. That just happens to be funded by Bryce Dickery. Thank you, Ike. This is what I'm saying. What are you saying, Declan? That it's cold? That the food sucks? You think I like this crap any better than you? We all signed the contract. Yeah, but it it sounded a lot better in Moscow than it does right now, freezing the giblets off. Then do something useful and help Ike pack up the equipment and we can get off this hillside. I hear dinner tonight is roasted yak. Oh, well, there's another reason to hurry right there. We wouldn't want to miss the local nightlife. Just shut up. How cold does it get here when the sun goes down? Depends on the wind. I read on the internet, with no wind, it usually stays a balmy 20 or 30 below zero. But the way this valley is shaped, with the wind it can get as low as minus 160. God almighty. Never ceases to amaze me where people will choose to live. Same internet post says the people that live here have always lived here, even when it was a jungle. This place was never a jungle. Had to be. All that oil downslope. Had to come from somewhere. I can't see why anyone is making a fuss about any kind of economic development out here. It's like one of the last unspoiled places on Earth. That glacier formed when there were no people, you idiot. Oh, it's a big pile of ice if you ask me. And ice only has one use, right, Ike? Like keeping my beer cold? <laughs> <laughs> (laughs) 
the whole point of the project is to connect us to our primal selves. We've lost that connection to our earliest incarnation, and we here at Everish Co. only wish to bring that purity back. But only to those who can afford it. Well, naturally our service isn't free. You're here. You know how tough it is to get this water to the market. So, yes, it carries a price that respects the hard work and sacrifice of the people who bring it to you. Of course. <clears throat> Mr. Dickory, what made you take up this humanitarian mission? So glad you asked. I had a vision. Crystal clear water that could save the world. And there I was, standing on a golden boat, handing it out to everyone one bottle at a time. I don't mean to be sacrilegious here, but I felt a bit like Jesus. <laughs> Oops, sorry about that. Won't be a minute. Ah, yes, Hayashi-san. So good of you to call. Might be a bit. He's an idiot. So, is this a union break, or what? Hell no. Declan, get your ass in that chair, and let's get our B-roll of your reactions. What reactions? He hasn't said anything then react to everything he could say. You know, emote. Oh, so what? I'm just supposed to sit there and look somber or happy or what? Fearful? How about if we shoot me looking like I just found a nest of giant mutant lobsters? Just sit down, you tool. Ike, fire it up. Come on, Lorelei. That buffet downstairs won't last long once the fat cats get here and I want first crack. Shoot it fast, then. Declan, just not a lot with an interested look. Yeah, I can do that. Roll it, Ike. That's right. Oh, so interesting. Really? Saving humanity for only $10,000 a bottle. Wow, that is surprisingly affordable. What a humanitarian. Oh, I see. The world's eighth richest man, and this is what you choose to do. Ah, yes. Melt that glacier. Who cares how long it's been there? <laughs> and, and where are the four-star accommodations? Or the food? Did you try that yak? If not, don't. Look, guys, I know this isn't what any of us envisioned when Bryce talked us into this, but I, for one, can't give him the money back. So I'm stuck here until I get this stupid thing done and get the other half of my money. Oh, yeah, but Lily, he's such a jackass. And a liar. I mean, you sent me out to find interesting things to put in this turd of a film. But so far, the most interesting thing Ike and I have found in a day and a half is some old witch that threw yak dung at us and yelled at us in Russian. Put that in your film. You got another way home? Either of you? Then I guess hitching a ride is out. So Declan, sit back down and let's look like this is interesting and get the hell out of here. <laughs> Damn. Quick, Ike, roll and keep rolling. Maybe we can get something useful after all. Declan, sit down. Rolling. Sorry about that. Mr. Hayashi has cold feet. I told him that was normal when working with glaciers. Like I know anything about glaciers. Really? How interesting. Why don't you sit down and we'll pick it up where we left off? Of course. But I only have a few minutes left this morning. It seems that they're ready to fire up the coring device. The what? The hot, melty thing that opens up the hole. They have a name for it, but I'll be damned if I can remember. <laughs> uh, as long as it opens that pit up. A money pit. <laughs> oh. So, you're not doing this for humanitarian reasons. Look around you. How many humans do you see? There's a reason this glacier hasn't been touched in forever. No one cares about it. But then why are you spending all this money to do this? Ah, well, you see... <coughs> how long has that been on? <coughs> it's not just for the money. We need to bring this water to the public, and we need to bring an economic engine to this area. Think of all the good these jobs are doing. How many locals do you employ? None yet. 
but when we open, we expect to employ almost the entire local population in one endeavor or another. Oops. There's me again. Sorry, but that test can't wait for little old me. We can pick this up again later. Of course, Mr. Dickory. Ike, cut. Excellent. So nice working with you folks. I know it's rough out here. Just the three of you, all alone in the middle of nowhere. But don't worry. If you just help us out here, then we'll take very good care of you. Uh, ab about the housing situation too, Mr. Dickery? <laughs> of course, Mr. McManus. Now that the lodgings are open, we can move all of you into one of our suites. See Jen in appointments and she'll handle it all. Oh, really? <laughs> well, thank you. Not a problem. That's the kind of man I am. Oh, hey, here's an idea. Since you're closer to me now, why don't I pop by later this evening and we can see how you're settling in and you can show me your footage up till now. We can make it kind of a movie and popcorn thing. Oh, um, sure. Uh, sounds great. Terrific. See you around seven then. Oh, and when you're done here, you can film the test from the observation deck. We should be ready to go in about half an hour. Thank you, sir. We'll be ready. I love working with professionals. They understand that, one way or another, they always get taken care of. Doodaloo! Did you hear that? He wants to see the footage. Can we just not show him that? No, but he'll see the splice. You know he will. There's no hiding it. That's true. I don't have a field edit unit, so... It... Calm down, you two. Ike, make a copy of everything you've shot so far. I can do that. Then hide it somewhere. That way, we can still show it to Dickory and keep what we've got. Look, he's no saint. So what? When his little infomercial goes public, the rights to that footage of what he really thinks will be worth twice what we're making here. Hmm. I hadn't thought of that. That's why you're the talent, my love. So break this down, and I'll go do the scout work at the observation platform. Once we're done there, we'll all take the equipment to the suite. Okay, you're the boss. We do this right, and nobody has a boss anymore. Come on, let's go. Well, Mr. Dickory, that is one impressive machine. Yes, we're all very proud of Irv. They tell me it's the largest ice drill in the world. Is that important, to have a big one? Vital. You see, if you want to get deep inside this glacier, where the good stuff is, you need a tool big enough to do the job. Uh-huh. Okay. It looks like we're all set. Ready to roll? You mean we weren't? Pity. I like that bit. No matter. Fire away. Okay. Why Irv? Ice recovery vehicle. Simple. It's got a really big... How far down do you have to drill? Well, to the bottom, naturally. Do you know how far down that is, or what's even at the bottom? Good question. It's a long way down, that's for sure. As for what's down there, we have taken lots of sonar scans and know that the bottom is good solid rock. No worries there. Aren't you at all worried about bringing up contaminants from over a million years ago? Come again? Contaminants. You know, bacteria or viruses that might still be alive? Right. Those. That's one of those questions I call over a science person to answer. Donna, do you have a minute for these lovely people? So should I cut it then? Nah, roll on. And who are you, ma'am? Donna Philberg, PhD in Geology and Mechanical Engineering. Terrific! I was asking Mr. Dickory about contaminants from the bottom. Yes, we employ a microseptic filter that both pasteurizes and cleans the water for human consumption simultaneously. Sounds fancy. How does it work? Well, it has seven filters, and they're really small. I mean the cleaning part. Are you using chemicals or heat? Radiation. That one I can answer. 
We bombard it with some kind of high energy wave and presto. Clean water from seven million years ago. Is that even safe? Sure. You use microwaves to boil water, which can also kill germs, and it's basically the same thing. Uh-huh. <coughs> so what is today's test for? We're testing the frequency dispersal of the Earth. And what does that do? It provides the frequency of the Earth. It lets us know if Earth works or not. <laughs> Thank you, Donna. No problem, boss. That was your science person? Best in the business. And speaking of business, I suggest we get down to it. They appear to be ready for us. Okay, you go ahead. We'll cut in Declan's reaction shots after, anyway. So fire that big boy up! That's the spirit. That's centuries sloshing away. Yeah, breaks my heart. Can we do my cutaways next? It's bloody freezing up here. Not until after we get the machine footage. God knows how long they're going to run this test. It's not exactly like Donna the Science Queen gave us much to work with. I know, I was on sound. Even I know more science than that woman. That's saying a lot. I kind of had one question now. They didn't seem to know a lot about the glacier, but they seem to have mapped the bottom. Oh, I would think you'd have to. Why? I mean, uh, do you really need water from just the bottom? Once you get down to a certain level, does seven million year old water taste much different than eight million year old water? Yeah, he also slipped the date. I noticed that too. Notice what? Nice sound work. He said eight million to start and now it's seven. A million years is a lot to lose, even on something as big as this. So what? Hang on, he's looking. Thumbs up, everyone, and smile! Oh yeah, like that didn't look weird at all. So what? He got confused. He's not a detailed kind of guy, if you hadn't noticed. True, but he's a slick salesman. You'd think he'd keep the details of the pitch straight. I'm not sure you should use the words think and Bryce Dickery in the same sentence. Maybe not, but come on, something's fishy. Oh, don't even mention food. Should I bring the camera and sound? Just keep shooting from here. Declan, grab your mic and give me some standing in front of the machine talking stuff. Oh, great, where's the script? Say anything. I don't care. I just want to get that footage. It also gives me an excuse to move closer to that machine. Ike, I'll use my light meter to indicate the areas to zoom in on. I get it. They won't let us get close, but this baby has a 30 to 1 zoom. Should get you some pretty pictures. Just shoot the area that I'm holding the light meter around. Look, I'm worried about not having a script. I, I'm not very good at improvisation. Look, it's a big machine. It drills into ice. Just vamp with that for a few minutes. I'm telling you, I can't vamp. Shut up and get moving. Rolling. This should be fine. Just stand here and pretend to say something related to the movie. Right. I'll do my best. Good enough. Good luck. So, you are impressed with our big boy here. I can honestly say it's provided the most interesting footage so far. What are you doing there? Checking light levels. Ike's over there shooting the test from a distance and told me we had dark spots. Yes, well, definitely fix that. We want to show off. Yes, sir, Mr. Dickery. Why don't you call me Bryce? You know, we could finally do that one-on-one -on -one you wanted back in Moscow. I'm here to shoot your movie, Mr. Dickery, like we agreed back in Moscow. And just like we agreed back in Moscow, after your behavior at our first interview, I will continue to call you Mr. Dickery. <laughs> well, can't blame a fellow for trying again. No, but again and again, you kind of start to hold a grudge. What the deuce? Shut it down! Shut it down! Hit a snag. I'm sure it's nothing we can't fix. After all, 
This was a test. Things go wrong in tests. It is the purpose of having tests. Why don't you go ask Dr. Donna what happened? <clears throat> Quite. So, until later then. How you doing over here, sport? Not well. I, I panicked when this German lady asked me what I was doing. German lady? Who was she? She turned out to be the bloody janitor or something, but that's not the point. I started trying to talk about the machine, just like you said, but she kept asking questions and soon I was babbling. Lily, just babbling away. God knows what came out. Relax, Declan. She's a janitor. Don't worry, I'm sure you made as much sense to her as you do to me. Let's go find out if Ike noticed anything. So, anything? Like I would know. I got pictures of the parts you were pointing at, if that's what you mean. Other than that, I couldn't tell you if I was shooting a nuclear bomb or a cigarette lighter. Damn! I was hoping something would stand out. Something did. Just not about the machine. What? Well, I was shooting from here like you said. Then this lady came up and started talking with Declan, so I picked up some footage of the two of them. Do you have a fetish for photographing idiots and janitors? Hey! Shooting idiots is my job, but that woman is no janitor. I'd bet my life on it. What do you mean? Well, she finished talking to Declan and then got in the elevator. Right after that, the machine started having trouble. So? Well, when Dickory was chatting with you right after, he hurried away. Guess who was signaling to him from the elevator? The janitor? Camera don't lie. And you got a clear shot of her face? Lots. She was talking to Declan for, like, forever. Tell me about it. No, Declan. You tell me about it. What did you two talk about? I, I don't know. The, the machine? The ice? All the cold? The movie? It's not my fault. I told you. I can't vamp. And you didn't get anything on Sound Ike? Well, we never hooked Declan's mic in. Listen to me, you moron. I need to know what you two talked about. We're moving into Dickory's Hotel of Danger, if you forgot. I'd like to know what they know, just in case it's a trap. All right, all right, calm down. <sighs> well, uh, she asked me what I was doing there, and I told her about the film and the crew, and she asked where we came from, so I told her, and, and let's see, she asked if I was looking forward to leaving, and I said yes, and we chatted a bit about how I couldn't wait to leave, and then she left. Seems innocent enough. Yeah, but my mom was CIA. Why would a janitor want to know our travel plans? Hey, yeah. Well, it's not like I just blurted it out. I only said I couldn't wait to get out of here as fast as possible. You idiot! If they think we know something we don't, they'll think we're trying to expose them. But we don't know anything. But they don't know that. For all we know, they're planning on doing us in for what they think we know. Look, I really think you're making more of this than- Stop thinking, Declan. I don't know what's going on here, but I know this footage is hot. They don't want something we have on this camera to be seen. I'd bet my life on it. Yeah, just might be. I finished copying the raw footage so far. Got it in the green storage box. Great. Now we just need a place to hide it. Any thoughts? There's security everywhere. It's not like we know the place better than they do. Yeah, but we know someone who just might. The old Russian woman in town. What? The lady who threw yak dung at us. Are you mad? What makes you think she'll help us do anything? I know I don't speak Russian, but go away is universal. I mean, we could hide it at her place if one of us distracted her. That might work. I can tell Dickory you're getting more B-roll so it won't look suspicious. Well, not as much. And I'm certain to be the distraction. Super! I don't care if she throws her own dung at you. Get going. Right. Meet you at the suite. Let's go, Deck. Mush! Into the Valley of Death Road, the 600. Sit down and watch the match, Declan. Your pacing is driving me crazy. They're supposed to be here by now. No later than six, she said. 
So? So what if they've already got the thumb screws on her and they're just waiting around to pick us up? You know, like loose ends. You're just upset because that Russian witch went crazy again. I just don't see why anyone could be so crazy as to pick up dung to throw it at another human being. That whole place was filthy, covered in it. They don't like strangers around here. That's an understatement. Yeah, well, no one should find it there. I think we're all set here. You remember what to do? Of course. I fawn and compliment Dickory. Right. He is his own favorite subject, so get him talking about it. It should keep him distracted long enough for us to get through this. Right. Just like chatting up old ladies to finance a film. Except you don't have to sleep with him. Right. Things are looking up already. Ah, spoke too soon. Splendid stuff, really. Ah, and here are the other lost souls. How are you? Settling in all right? Oh, hello, uh, yeah, Mr. Dickery. Yeah, it, it, yes, it's very nice. Thank you very much for letting us move in here. Think nothing of it. Lorai tells me that you all have been out and about capturing the local flora and fauna and whatnot. Just B-roll. That's an industry term. No need to tell me about industry. Busy little bees. That's what I like. So, my little bees. Let's look at some footage, eh? All queued up and ready for you. Uh, why don't you sit here, sir? Um, would you like a drink? Yes, a scotch over ice. Ask one of the boys there for my private flask. The swill we stock in this place is terrible. <coughs> Seriously, two cubes. Now go away. We just queued up the tape from the start of when we got here. I thought that's what you'd be most interested to see. Good thinking. So what, I just use this little remote here? Yes, sir. You just press the triangle button and it'll start automatically. Isn't technology fantastic? Bear in mind, Mr. Dickory, this is the rough footage. It won't look like the final product at all. No need to tell me. You'll do your computer wizardry, and I'm sure you'll make us all look spectacular. Here's your drink, uh, Mr. Dickory. Wonderful. Thank you. Let's see what we've got here. Ice fair and a glacier. Now, you see, here we, we tried to get as much footage of the glacier as we could, you know, for an establishing shot. Speaking of establishing, let's get this groovy party going right. Let's establish that I don't want you talking in my ear the whole time. Memo gotten? Uh, yes, Mr. Dickery. While he's watching, let's talk outside. That suits me. I can't shut up someone if I can't talk. Ike's at the bar. We can scoop him up quietly on the way. Don't know what all the chit-chat is, but don't go anywhere just yet. Boys, make sure they stay handy, will you? You're a natural, Declan. Yeah, thanks, mate. Oh, uh, does anyone know what she's actually saying? One of your people had a go at it. Apparently they don't speak Russian like regular Russians. It's more like Cajun speaking English. So, uh, so underneath all the dialect, your guys could pick out a lot of go away and you don't belong here and... Oh yeah, get this. The dragon that breathes nothing, whatever that is. Local folklore, as near as we can tell, sir. Seems that the legend is that this glacier was formed by the gods to contain this <laughs> dragon. Fantastic. I didn't know any of that. I mean, you work at a place and you think you know, but you don't. Whoops. That's me again. Tell you what. Since all these gizmos are so cool and your movie so far is great, let me just take this with me and watch the rest of it later. I have to go greet some investors. Um, sure. I can't think of any reason why not. How about you, Ike? Um, um, no. 
We got plenty more tape. Super. Boys, bring that along with me. And if I watch it and have, let's just say, questions, I hope you don't mind if I send the boys back to pick you up and hop on over to my place for a nightcap and a chinwag. I, I go to bed real early, you know, the, the beauty sleep. Nonsense. Of course, Mr. Dickory. Awesome. Toodaloo, everyone. See you for the grand opening tomorrow morning. If not sooner. I do hate to drink alone. <laughs> well, that's it then. That's what? We don't know if that film has anything he doesn't like. Just that one bit, and it's not on that copy. Right. See? Nothing to worry about. He's just crazy. Right. He's a loon. And a horse's ass. <laughs> totally crazy. I mean, bats and belfry type stuff. And he's a liar. Oh, God, yes. Has he told us one true thing since we met him? <laughs> no. I didn't want to say anything, but Dickory's not meeting investors. There isn't another train scheduled until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning for the grand opening. That bastard! So, what is he doing? I don't know. I just know it isn't meeting anyone on an inbound train. How do you know that? I asked the railroad guy, just in case we needed a way out of here tonight. No dice. Only way out is over the ice. Oh, great. Wait for the crazy man to come back or risk becoming an iceberg. And technically, icebergs are in the ocean. Shut up. Shut up, both of you. Look, Dickory is crazy, and without a doubt, things don't add up here. The question is, are we willing to risk our lives about it? Hell no. I'm not sure we're going to get a choice. Well, now you've gone mad. No, Deck, he's right. I was thinking the same thing. Say everything is on the level. He still doesn't know what he's doing, and that machine is one big bomb. The grand opening tomorrow could be one of the biggest explosions since Krakatoa. Yeah, but without a train, we're stuck here to film it, Lily. Or we could try to figure out what he's up to and stop it. Might even save some lives. We've only got so much time while we're free to move around. If there's nothing he objects to, we have till the morning and then the big boom. If he finds something... They'll be back sooner. Okay, maybe. But us... Save anyone? We can't even save ourselves. That's how we got here. Yeah, but we are here. We're the only ones here. We kinda have to try. Besides, that footage would be worth some money. Yeah, Deck. Save the world, win an Oscar, get famous. Sounds good to me. Oh yeah, I get that part. While you were blabbing, I was thinking. Oh my god. Oh, hear me out and, and get your things together in a hurry. Now who's crazy? Dickory, that's who. Now come on, shake a leg. Yeah, he's lost it. So what? Come on, come on. You know what crazy people do, Lily? They're paranoid. They do things like put microphones in hotel rooms if they want to know something. What? Crap, he's right. Dickory is just that kind of crazy. Grab it and go. Well, hand me the sound gear. I'll get the door. Hate to say it, Deck, but good thinking. I told you it was more than just a pretty face. Now run! Where are we running to? I don't know yet. Just run. Oh, it's not much of a plan so far. We need to get somewhere outside. That doesn't sound like the way out. Come on, this way. Try that door. Yeah, it's got an exit sign. Great. Stairs. Which way? Up or down? Down. Maintenance sheds are on the ground level. Best chance to find a snow cat. Down it is. Move! Slow down. This bag is heavy. Here, give it to me. Go! Hurry! Ugh! Help! Boy! Bullocks! Are you guys okay? Just peachy. Ah! Rabber! It's the German! I got her. Ah! Ow! Ah! Oh, no you don't. Ah! Get back down there. Nice work, guys. Stand her up. Come on. Off you go. And what are we supposed to do with her? For the moment, run through that door. She may be the only one who can tell us what is actually going on. Good plan. Run! In here. Get in here. 
So far, going great. Oh, sure. Brilliant so far. What next? We meet our new friend. Hello. I don't think we've met. Yeah, I know who you are. Well, that hardly seems fair, friend. I don't think you could ever call me friend, but perhaps you might call me ally. Oh, pardon me for the Nazi. Jog on, mate. I'm not a Nazi, you idiot. And we need to help each other or we may not make it out of here alive. Any of us. Quick! The elevator is up one flight. We might make it if we run. Elevator? This place feels like it's going to fall apart. I don't think that's a good idea. It's carved into the bedrock of the mountain. It is the quickest way out, and since I think you're the reason for the alarms, perhaps our safest. She makes a strong point. Grab the gear and go. Up. Up. This way. Come on. What the hell is going on? It's that fool. He wouldn't listen to me. The elevator is over there. Get the gear in. Last of it coming in now. Now what? Everyone in here, quickly! Move it, Declan. Hey, catch. It's that fool, Dickory. He might very well kill us all. Why? What have you two been up to? My name is Hildegard Shellman. I work for a company that prefers to be discreet in its investment here, so naturally I would prefer to leave them out of this. Who cares? We got a crazy man trying to kill us and this place might blow up any minute. What are you doing here? Mining. At the bottom of this glacier sits a meteorite. This particular meteorite is over a third of a kilometer in diameter. That is one big space rock. Exactly. And this particular space rock is composed primarily of pure iridium. Well, that's good. That sounds very bad. It's the rarest metal on the planet, primarily because it cannot be found on this planet. Earth does not manufacture it in large quantities. Space, on the other hand, has vast amounts. So what? This meteorite crashes into Earth, and then what? Three billion years go by. This whole area was once one of the most geologically active volcanic regions in the world. For over a thousand years, this whole plain was boiling lava. The meteorite, being lighter than the denser rock in the lava, rolled to where it is today. Then the sediments covered it completely up. Remember, we are talking billions of years, not thousands. How does the glacier enter into it? During one of the ice ages, this area was reshaped by the glacier's advance and retreat. The meteorite got lodged in this one place, and the ice has remained there ever since. Okay. That explains the ice drill and you. What about Dickory? He's a stupid salesman. We needed his idiotic idea of selling this water to hide our true intentions. The Russian government would never sell the mining rights to us if they knew what was under the glacier. And why mine thousands of meters of rock when this glacier did that for us already? We merely needed to move through the glacier to get the riches underneath. But Dickory owed billions to the Russian government. Uh, you mean mafia? A tomato tomato, perhaps. They quite literally put a gun to his head and told him to find a way to make this area repay his debts. Makes sense now. I knew this couldn't be for real. Yeah, but what went wrong? This place doesn't feel like it was built to do this. A dickery and his stupid test. He exceeded the agreed upon depth and opened a methane pocket. And this place indeed might explode. And so once we get to the bottom, what's the plan? There's a subway that we built to support the mining. It runs to the airfield so we could bring in equipment discreetly. What we will do is use the airfield radio to summon assistance. It's the only transmitter powerful enough to reach out of here that isn't under Dickory's control. Wow, good plan. We are a German firm. We've tried to plan for every contingency. Like the mountain is going to blow up contingency? Actually basement floor. Lingerie, assorted rubber goods. Jeez Louise, look at this place. This is the central mine hub. From here, shafts run down into the ice and retrieve the iridium for processing. The subway is through 
this access way. Be careful, the shafts are made of ice, and we aren't wearing the special boots we give the miners. How are we supposed to run on ice? Didn't you ever play hockey? You don't run, you shuffle, fast. Come on, dingbats, slide the gear in front of you. From here, it is only a short way to the platform. Uh, seriously, uh, I, I'm sorry I called you a Nazi. I, I really, I am, but uh, what are our chances of actually making it out of here? <laughs> Not very good. I'm afraid you won't be going anywhere. Dickory, you madman! Put that down and let us all get out of here. Your recklessness will kill us all. Kill us? Not bloody likely. Save us is more like it. There is no <laughs> more time, Dickory. Why? Just because the plant is knocking a little? Pishaw, Hildegard. I know your fellows made this station tough enough to take a lot. And I made it tougher still, in secret. If this place explodes, the mine will be lost. And even if not, my company will not continue this venture with you at the helm. That's why I have always loved free market capitalism. Take you all as an example. You all don't like your jobs very much. So you're running. Running, running, running. Job to job, place to place, paycheck to paycheck. Ah! Don't worry, Hildegard. It won't kill you. I need you still. Where was I? Oh, yes. Capitalism. See, I'm different. I take a look at the market, in this case, this mine in its future, and I forecast that this wasn't a very good investment after all. I mean, really. Ice drills and giant meteors. Come on. Where's the sex? So I juiced it up a bit, so to speak. Diggory, listen to me. It's not too late. You can stop this. Oh, but Laura lie. Why would I want to? Sure, at the bottom of this pit is a big, expensive rock. Boring. It was when old Hildegard here said the meteor was mostly iridium that caught my ear. What do you mean? What have you done? What I do best. I created a market where none existed before. What you found down here was precious metal. I found something much more precious, and worth a damn sight more, too. That rock is amazing. Did you know that it whizzed through space for over a billion years or more before it hit us? That's the fun bit for me. Something else hitchhiked on that rock. An alien tardigrade. It's a hardy little microscopic beastie that can withstand eons of space exposure and come right back to life if certain conditions are met. And this water is those right conditions. Our weapons division has already sold billions in access rights to these little critters. My god, you are actually insane. I know. Isn't it fun? Oh! Run! He can't shoot us all! Damn. Now it's back to the chasing. Dickory, stop this before it is too late. You always were stupid, Hildegard. It is already too late. Our little friends and I came to an operating agreement shortly after we found the meteor. A symbiotic alliance, if you will. They are really wonderful little creatures. They're explorers from an ancient civilization. Quite fascinating. And a whole lot of fun. Oh, I'm sorry, Hildegard. Those wounds look too serious for you to be of use anymore. Please. Well, sure, Hildegard. Since you said please. Ah! I feel bad for poor Hildegard. Please, she and Dickory were in on it from the start. And I don't like where this is going. What, the train? No. We can't just run away. Even if we can get help at the airfield, Dickory's still going to do his evil thing back at the glacier. You heard him. He planned for this. 
We have to give him something he didn't plan for. I see what you mean. Station's coming up. Get ready. Look, why do we have to do anything? We just barely escape with our lives. And how long can we keep them? If Dickory does whatever he has planned. A year? Maybe two? Airfield looks deserted. No one to be seen. Probably all went running to the alarm. We may have caught the last train out of town. Yeah, maybe. Let's go. Oh, jeez, it's cold. Duff. Yeah, but you forget about it. Radio shack's over there. Move it then. Leave the gear. We'll come back for it. All right. I'll try and signal for help. The tower should have a set I can use. Guard this door. Sounds good. You do that. I have something else to do. What? You're not going to leave me here. Only for a little while. Because I can't leave him there. I saw some cases of high-grade explosive in a shed that probably has more. I'm going to pack the subway with it and send it back down to the mine. He said he built it like a fortress. No. He said he made it stronger. But every structure is vulnerable if you take out the base. If I can make a big enough boom, even that thing can't hold up. Added bonus, it should kill Dickory. I like that part. We all do. Okay, get moving and then get back here. Be safe. I'll use the auto loader. I'll be back before you know it. Be safe on the, uh, on the ice, you know. No worries. Only keeps my beer cold. Back soon. Stay at the bottom of the stairs. I'll get help. <coughs> okay, I found the radio. Can you see Ike? Yeah, he's made it back to the station. Great. Give me a minute. Everything's in German. Oh, sure. You take all the time you want. I'm just, just fine here. There's no madmen. There's no bloody cold. Ooh. Lovely. Crap. Declan, get up here quick. I didn't. I shouldn't have said that out loud. What's the disaster now? Another train. Look. So? Oh. Oh, that's bad. You're telling me. That can only mean Dickory is on his way here now. Super. And your plan is? We have to warn Ike. But that's still not going to stop the supervillain from killing us. Have you got any better ideas? Why are you asking me? Ike. Ike. Come in. Dickory has another train. He's on his way. Look, let's just steal a plane and get the hell out of here. Great idea, Deck. Except none of us can fly. We can't steal a pilot, too. Look, I did that pilot film. I piloted a plane once. You taxied it on an abandoned runway. Not the same thing. I don't want to escape Dickory to die at your hands. Oh, I see what you mean. Look, one of us has to get to him to warn him. I'll keep trying the radio. You go warn him. Okay, got it. Then what? I don't know. I was hoping you'd had a better answer, but never mind. I'll, I'll see you soon. Hope. Don't get goofy about it. Just come back soon. Ike. Ike. Please come in. Dickory is on his way. There's another train. Come in. Come on, Deck. Get there. No! Deck, what are you doing? Not that way! Jeez! Ike! Ike! Over here, Lorelei. Thank the gods. Ike, Dickory is coming. He has a second train and it's already on the way. Crap. Now I'm almost done here. I'm sure with this and the train it should collapse that whole mountain. Where's Declan? I don't know. I sent him over here, but he ran off towards the airplanes. God, he's no pilot. How much time do we have? Enough to run. He should be here any second. Let me just send our little care package on the way. What are you doing? Leave the gear! Hell no. I recorded his alien love and ass the whole time. 
We have to tell the world what he was up to, or some other company doesn't send someone even worse. Crap! You really did mean save the world. Just shut up and run. Look for Deck. Do you see him? Screw that. I'm trying to figure out what to do when Dickory gets here. I sent all the explosives down the line. Any guns around here? I didn't look, but I didn't see any. Nothing. Great. Well, when he gets here, we can hope he freezes to death before we do. I'm sorry, Ike. This is all my fault. Hey. You may have been chasing Oscars, but it's not like you dragged me along kicking and screaming. Thanks for that, Ike. It means a lot. Maybe. Maybe not. Dickory's train is pulling in. Should we go fight him out there, or wait for him to break in and kill us here? I say fight the bastard the whole way down. Last stand it is, then. He's here. I can see him. He just stepped outside. It won't take him long to find us. Not many places to hide. Is that my care package? Yep. Wow. He looks pissed. Serves him right. You ready? Yeah. You know he's gonna kill us, right? Humanity is actually doomed. We can't win. I know, and I don't care if I become some kind of alien thing later. Right now, I am ready to die as a human. Ditto. Tower, come in. Lily, can you hear me? Deck? Deck, what are you doing? Trying out an idea. You're right. I can't fly a plane. I see him. He's in a cargo freighter. Declan, get out of there. You can't fly that thing. No, but I sure can crash it. You see, that's my idea. I'm gonna crash this big bastard right into his face, and then you all can get away the best way you know how. Declan, stop. It's stupid. It's too late, Lily. It's my turn to save the bloody world. Just make sure someone hears about it, okay? Deck. You got it, buddy. All right, Mr. Dickery. Your airplane is ready. Bullseye. At least he saved everyone else. Don't worry, Lorelai. We'll get lucky. Someone's bound to come along before too long. Yeah. The Thaw. The role of Lorelei was played by Sarah Llewellyn. Declan portrayed by Scott D. Ford. Ike was played by Ed Kegg. Bryce Dickery was played by Seth Leek. Hildegard was portrayed by Hannah Dupre Severance. Dr. Donna was played by Chiquita Wright. Written, produced, and created by Scott D. Ford. Directed by Christy Leek and Scott D. Ford. Edited by Scott D. Ford and Christy Leake. Sound engineer, Chuck Dickin. The Dark Lands is a work of fiction. All characters, persons, and situations are intended for entertainment purposes. Any similarity to persons living or dead is entirely accidental. The Dark Lands is a cooperative venture between WFWM 91.9 and Misfit Toys Industries. It is protected under U.S. and international copyright. 
The Darklands is a wholly owned property of Misfit Toys Industries. Any reproduction, distribution, or rebroadcast of this program in part or whole without the express written consent of Misfit Toys Industries and the Darklands LLC is strictly prohibited. Misfit Toys Industries is solely responsible for the content of this program. Please check out our website at www.thedarklandshow.com to enjoy this program again. The producers would like to sincerely thank WFWM 91.9 and Frostburg State University for their generous cooperation in the production of this program. Thank you for listening.